Duchenne muscular dystrophy, or DMD, is a genetic disease that results in progressive muscle degeneration and weakness. It is caused by a mutation in the dystrophin gene, which renders the protein useless. DMD is a very severe condition and often results in death by the patient's early 30s. In order to prolong the lifespan and improve the quality of life of DMD patients, treatment of the disease uses a multidisciplinary approach. One aspect of multidisciplinary care is nutrition, and in this video we will go into depth on why and how nutrition is an important part of treating DMD. We will do this by looking at health concerns faced by DMD patients and how nutrition is used to address these problems. Weight gain is common in DMD patients and should be limited as a part of disease management. Being severely overweight can further complicate aspects of the disease, such as difficult breathing and problems with movement. Weight gain in Duchenne patients occurs for two main reasons, decreased level of physical activity and corticosteroid use. Duchenne patients have to be very careful about the types of exercise they perform because exercise can damage their muscles and worsen the disease symptoms. For this reason, they cannot exercise at a moderate or high intensity and subsequently burn less calories. Furthermore, the degenerative nature of the disease causes most Duchenne patients to lose the ability to walk between ages 10 and 14. This means they are confined to a wheelchair and their caloric expenditure will decrease even further. Most DMD patients are on corticosteroids, which have been shown to lessen the effects of the disease and improve their quality of life. However, a side effect of these steroids is an increase in appetite. This puts them at a risk to gain weight. All in all, specialists predict that caloric consumption for DMD patients should be about 80% of caloric consumption for non-DMD individuals. This means DMD patients should monitor how many calories they are eating. Additionally, DMD patients should eat high fiber and high protein foods, which will help them feel full longer. And they should decrease sugary, refined, and high fat foods, which would, can contribute to weight gain. The etiology of osteoporosis in DMD patients is very similar to that of weight gain. Diminishing levels of weight-bearing exercise throughout life cause loss of bone density due to bone's adaptive properties. Osteoporosis is an adverse effect of long-term corticosteroid treatment as well. Osteoporosis occurs in DMD patients who are not receiving steroid treatment, but the risks are greater for those who are. Osteoporosis inherent to DMD has a number of causes. Progressive muscle weakness and immobilization affect bone calcium homeostasis, and patients' vitamin D levels are often reduced due to low levels of outdoor physical activity. Additionally, cytokines from the increased inflammatory response in dystrophin-deficient muscles cause progenitor cells to differentiate into osteoclasts rather than osteoblasts, causing the balance of bone homeostasis to tip towards bone loss rather than growth. Corticosteroid use further impairs osteoblast function and generally impacts patients' vertebral bones more dramatically than their long bones, regardless of whether or not the patients are ambulatory. Corticosteroids also diminish intestinal absorption of calcium and vitamin D, which are both essential for bone health. These effects worsen osteoporosis already seen in DMD patients to greatly increase their risk of bone fractures. Long bone fractures have been found to be 2.6 times more frequent for patients with steroid treatment, and vertebral fractures become increasingly likely as the patient ages. Often, patients experience either type of fracture will be unable to walk again if they had not already lost ambulation due to severely weakened bone reformation. A diet rich in vitamin D and calcium is necessary to compensate for the body's hindered metabolism of both nutrients. Supplementary intake of both has been shown to improve bone mineral density in DMD patients. Dairy product consumption may be preferable to direct calcium intake as natural dairy products contain numerous additional nutrients and can often be readily implemented into any diet. Vitamin D can also be found in dairy products, as well as fatty fish like tuna or salmon. Although natural sources of vitamin D are limited, it is often added to juices and yogurts to supplement their nutritional value. Gastrointestinal complications are relatively common in patients with neuromuscular disease. Swallowing impairment, collection of gastric air, and chronic constipation are the common complications that cause nutritional problems in patients with DMD. The muscles of mastication shown in the picture are skeletal muscles and can be affected if a person has DMD. This can lead to difficulty when eating meals and may even cause a patient to become stressed when thinking about their next meal. 
DMD patients of older age often have a prolonged duration of meal time due to their difficulty with chewing. Swallowing can prove to be a difficult task in a patient with DMD, and they might end up swallowing air as opposed to food, which can cause gastric dilatation or air in the intestines. Ways to improve problems with chewing and swallowing can be to cut up food into smaller pieces so that less chewing needs to be done or to blend food together and make a smoothie type of meal so that you can avoid chewing altogether. And more extreme interventions would be to insert a feeding tube for the DMD patient to make sure that they are receiving the proper nutrition. In a study conducted by Payne et al., 118 DMD patients were evaluated for gastrointestinal complications. Patients of ages ranging from 3 to 35 years old were evaluated and it was reported that 47% of the patients reported gastrointestinal symptoms. 36% of the patients in the study reported constipation. This problem is seen in DMD patients of 18 years or older. Constipation may be caused by immobility of the DMD patients, weakness of abdominal wall muscles, and inadequate fluid intake. Ways to improve gastrointestinal health in DMD patients include increasing fiber in the daily diet, which also is accompanied by in having an adequate hydration and proper fluid intake. Lactulose, which is a lactase supplement, can also be integrated into the diet to help with proper excretion. Little to no research has been conducted on GI complications in DMD patients. The study mentioned a few moments ago is just one of few. This is where multidisciplinary care of DMD patients plays an important role in making sure that the patient is monitored for all conditions that may arise associated with dystrophin defic deficiency. We would like to end our discussion of nutrition with an example of a potential meal for someone affected by DMD. Smoothies are an excellent option for DMD patients because they negate any problems associated with chewing. They can also be made with ingredients that are high in fiber, high in calcium, and or high in protein.